how to create a faux flip page ebook in Affinity Publisher. Now this isn't your true flip page book because the page turning doesn't animate, it just goes from page to page. But it is a good idea to be able to set this up. It shows you how you can use um, links across pages to move through a book or to move to any position in a book. And it works infinitely well with a PDF file um, exported in a certain manner, which I'll show you. Very short video, um, but it gives you an idea of how it all works. Let's call it an ebook template with page navigation. And you can, you can use it time and time again because it shows you basically how you can navigate around pages internally in a PDF file. And you can send PDF files to anybody. Works on Apple Books really well. Doesn't work on Kindle so well, but we'll come to that. So the first thing is to open Affinity Publisher and go to File, New, My Presets and create a preset that has all those following attributes you can see in the right hand side there. It's a standard ebook, remember, of 8.5 by 11 because it's no good as a print book. <laughs> you can't automatically flip pages in a print book. You've got to turn the pages yourself. But you can, of course, use any size, but keep in mind you're building an ebook PDF, not a book for print. Now, a PDF of 8x11 is a standard ebook size. Also, for the images that you can use on your front cover and internals uh, for a PDF, and of course, you can't successfully use images in a Kindle. So let's forget Kindle. With your preset selected, click on Create and your front page will be set up ready. And it looks like this. And this will create your basic ebook layout. But we have a bit of work to do yet. Currently, we have a single master page and six content pages. And six pages will do for the moment. First step duplicate the master layer and duplicate it twice. You need three master pages for this exercise. And I'll show two there, A, B, and C is still missing, but we'll get to C. Save your document at this stage if you haven't done so already. It's always a good idea to save your document so you don't end up with a document called Untitled. And I've called this one Flipbook Ebook Master. Drag out a horizontal and a vertical guideline to give your page centre to work to. Now you do that on all three masters, and we can we can see it there. Do the same for each master. And yes, I still only have two showing at the moment. You're free to make the third one whenever you like. And there it is. The third master has been added and the guides added. You know how to drag out a guideline. You hold your Apple pen point or your finger on the ruler at the left and then just drag out to the centre, halfway across the page, the same from the top margin, the ruler, drag down and leave it go when it gets to the centre. Now for the arrow placeholders. Select Master A and place a picture frame on the right hand side. You can see it there. Master A is your first page, so you're only going to be moving right from here. There's no page before the left one. You'll need a small set of arrows, one left facing and one right facing. Too simple. You can pick whatever design you like. I've picked those two arrows because they're nice and easy to see. Do the same for Master B, only this time it's the last page and you will be going left because if it's the last page of your book, you can't go any further right, you can only go left. And you have a left facing arrow. Lastly, select Master C and put two picture placeholders on that document. You've got left and right. So you can go to the right or you can go to the left. Now, this is Master C. This is the page that can go both ways. So you place an arrow either side. And you can see that. You know how to do this, I hope. You select your picture placeholder go up to the file, place, and place your arrow into the picture frame. And it places it nice and neatly inside the frame. 
Now the arrows are where you want them. Think about this. A is the front and you can just see the right facing arrow in Master A. B is the back page and you can just see the left facing arrow in, on the left hand edge of the page there. And C is the body of the book and you can see the left and right arrows in the master pages there. Now we begin the pages. Page one first. It already has a master A applied by default, so we can leave it for now. Now remember, master A will be by default applied to all your pages. If you look down that list, you can see the right facing arrow on all of them, which means you can only go right in your book, not left, and that's no good. Now, go to page do and apply master C to it. In fact, apply master C to pages, <coughs> excuse me, two, three, four, and five. Now, you know how to apply a master page. Right click on the page and apply master and select the master you want to apply. And in this case, apply master C to pages two, three, four, and five, with a comma between, and you can see the defaults there, selected pages, and then once you click OK, you can see page two, three, four, and so on down there. Page one has the right facing arrow, and page two, three, and four have left and right, left and right, left and right, and so on. Double click page to select it and you will see the two arrows clearly on the page, just outside the margins. You don't want them inside the margins because that will mean whatever you put inside the margins to read uh, will be partially blocked by those little arrows. Now go to the last page and apply master B. That's the last page so you can only go left. So you go down there, right click, apply master, or, or tap on it, um, apply master, you can't right click of course, yes you can, right click and apply master. Now the page 5 is showing the right type of arrows, page 5 has got the left hand one, it's the last page. And in addition, we're going to look at inserting hyperlinks into each arrow so we can move comfortably around the document. To insert hyperlinks, you right click on the arrow and scroll right down to where it says insert a hyperlink. But first, go back to the master pages and insert our page numbers. This is so you, can, you know where you're navigating to. We're going to miss out actual page one and start numbering from number one on actual page two. That's not too confusing. So you go to the document, master C, and put your page number in there. Insert fields page number. Your numbered masters will look like this, page and the hash sign for where the number goes. Now, to do this, go to the section manager. This is to start numbering on a different page. And add your selection to by selecting page to, then the section manager. That's the little bookmark type icon just there on the top of the pages section. Select start page numbering at 1 in section 2. Now, on to the next slide. There's a bit more detail. Start section on page 2. Restart page numbering at 1. Now you can see there's two sections there. Section 1 is only page 1. Section 2 is 1 to 4. Or is it 1 to 5? Give the section a name if you like. Hmm, pages start. Well, that's informative. But you can see in the left-hand column, you've got page one facing right. There's no pages marked in that. Page two is in highlight mode. And at the top of that page, it says page one, which is just what you want. You don't want the cover page as page one. Let's add some content to our book so we can see where we're going. So put picture markers on relevant pages. 
placeholders, that is, those cross placeholders, and you can put images on your pages. On the last page, just for fun, I've put a circle. So there's going to be a circular image there, and you can see on page 4, I think that is, there I've put a text thing. I'm hesitating there because I'm reading this on an iPad, and it's quite small. Now here you can see I've added some images to the other pages, and even a page of text to one page. Now, to make sure it all works as planned, when you export, you must export a PDF digital high quality all pages. Even if you've got multiple facing pages, which you shouldn't have in an ebook anyway, um, and I've done previous videos on this very fact, you need all pages, otherwise um, it won't display properly. It'd be a very difficult PDF to read. Now here's a tricky bit, adding the hyperlinks. You right click on the arrow and scroll all the way down to interactive, insert, hyperlink. Select the page you want to jump to. So don't get confused here. If you're on page four, you're going right to page six. Four or five, ah, easily to get confused. If you're on page four and you're going left, you're going to page three. So four to five or four to three and you insert the appropriate hyperlinks on each page. Otherwise, it won't work, obviously. Now, once it's exported, you can read it in Apple Books, and you can see there, I've got the, the cover file there, or even just as a raw PDF file. You can send it to somebody and they can step through it. But you can read it on your iPhone 11 or iPad, etc., and it works fine as a PDF or in the built-in reader. If you open this in iPhone 11, it looks very nice and scrolls around quite properly. But Kindle may or may not read it for you, but in some cases it does. And I've got one version on Kindle here that I opened it with Kindle, and it works fine. But if you send it to Kindle and it converts the document, the conversion will trash your document. It will not work. And Kindle, in any case, ignores the arrows. And you can see the one I've got there. That's Kindle on the Mac, and I just loaded it into Kindle. I didn't send it and convert it. But again, as I say, the embedded arrows don't work. You can see them, but Kindle ignores it. Whereas Apple Books doesn't. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it when you do.